Peace and greetings, peace and greetings from your boy, Brother Divine of A Culture Shock LLC. It is day 18 of the vlog, Life as an Entrepreneur, and it is a Thursday here in Huntsville, Alabama, so you know what that means, guys. It is brand the land Thursday. And it's funny that it's brand the land Thursday because this is what we used to do when we had the screen print shop, me and my brothers, man, salute Juju, salute Ronnie or whatnot, but this is one of our shirts that we uh, actually made or whatnot. It was... Uh, of the actual brand itself because that was the name of the business signs and symbols and the rtw stands for rule of the world but yeah brand the land thursday man uh, this is what we're going to be doing today giving out branding tips and promo tips or whatnot also um today is going to be uh we're going to be really focusing on like placement right uh placement is like the process of choosing the right distribution system for like delivering products and services you know to target markets uh, placement decisions impact brand presence and market share alike or whatnot. So ways to get products and services to the market can influence your positioning and make or break your budget. So we're going to be giving strategies as far as like your placement and things of that nature. Um, channel marketing, you know, this is like employing other business entities as part of your sales, delivery and um, service effort. And it also increases your ability to reach and influence targeted markets. So think of it as like a, a channel, you know, think of it as like a pathway to your customers, you know, in, in wherever area they're at, it's like an actual, you know, pathway to your customers and clients that you're trying to reach or whatnot. So, um, you know, we're going to be talking about different, you know, types of marketing channels. So, you know, channels are pretty much like partners. OK, and uh, channel partners are like a necessity for penetrating markets, you know, that are difficult, you know, to enter due to, you know, your geographic spread of uh, physical financial resources, human resources or it's just, you know, like time constraints. So think of them as like outsource distribution teams for sales, delivery and service needs or whatnot. So one type of uh, of marketing channel is wholesalers. And this is often like the first part of entry for products on their way to the market. Uh, you also have your retailers. You know, they pretty much purchase, purchase the products. Uh, they, you know, mark up the pricing or whatnot to cover their costs and then distribute the pro products directly to customers. So as far as what we're doing here at A Culture Shock LLC, uh, and this is just with our instance, certain other products we're going to find other distribution channels but um what we're going to do with the incense we have um gas stations or whatnot that sell our products the incense um and in huntsville i think i've seen maybe one other lady that actually hand rubs incense and um she has them in you know a couple stores but i really want to maximize on that and not just think locally you know I'm, uh, when i first started this business and it was divine essence I had three gas stations selling my my uh, incense or whatnot, um, just like that was saying. As far as like the retailers, they would buy them at a at wholesale cost or wholesale price or whatnot, and they would mark it up. And um, I was making pretty good because they were flying off the shelves or whatnot. This year, I plan on uh, I really want to have like starting off five gas stations or five just distributors. Period selling my incense. But I really want to think outside of Madison County. I want to think outside of Huntsville. I want to think outside of Alabama and have, you know, a Culture Shock LLC brand instant, you know, in, in a couple areas, you know. So this is just uh, a couple things, man, as far as, you know, ideas that you might want to take advantage of as far as like getting your products. Uh, you also have like uh, brokers and merchants. Now, brokers, they pretty much bridge you know, relationship between buyers and sellers, you know, in exchange for a commission. But they don't, you know, they don't purchase the product themselves. And then you have merchants, they buy the goods and resell them to, you know, other wholesalers or retail buyers or whatnot. So joint venture partners, and that's pretty much like strategic collaborators who expose your products and services to their own customers and clients. So you see a lot of this joint venture partnerships, a lot in the, the entertainment business, you know, with uh, music artists and things of that nature. Um, another channel market you have is affiliate marketers. And you see a lot of this with a lot of people who, you know, do videos on YouTube or whatnot, especially like the the how-to market. You'll see a lot of this type of marketing. So 
Uh, affiliate marketers are usually e-retailers who help expose products, services via their website in, in exchange for like rewards, cash, you know, gift cards when a sale is made. So an example, I do how-to videos on, on this YouTube channel or whatnot. So if I was an affiliate marketer, I would try to, you know, be a marketer for like Joann's, um, Michael's, any craft store that I actually go to on a regular basis and spend money with because I'll be able to get either paid by them or I can get discounts or gift cards to buy my products. So now the cost on a lot of my products that I create, you know, with my hands or whatever, is being uh, alleviated or whatever because I'm doing this affiliate marketing and I'm getting, you know, incentive to make sales, especially if I'm making sales for Michael's, you know, giving out these promo uh, coupons and things of that nature. So like I say, you see a lot of this in the how-to videos on YouTube. You, you'll see affiliate marketing all the time. You also have fulfillment houses, which is like a combination warehouse, order management, storage, and or like a pick and pack service. So Printify is, is an example of a fulfillment house, uh, you know, dealing with like garments, T-shirts, things of that nature. Then you have e-procurement. Um, an example of this is like um, eBay or whatnot, because this channel facilitates most instantaneous exchange of goods, services, merchandise for consumers, uh, consumer markets, business markets and government markets. Uh, another um channel is uh rss feeds or whatnot and rss stands for really simple syndication feeds or whatnot and these are used on a, like the internet and broadcast electronically and they help marketers share content to reach uh more consumers by way uh by making it easy for others to plug their content into you know their own website or whatever so you see a lot of this in uh podcasts and you'll see a lot of people taking advantage of the rss feeds as far as a marketing channel and then you also have sales force or whatnot and this is like actually like you know boots in the mud feeding the pavement you know uh, actual you know internal sales team telemarketers direct marketers you know who are going to tie your company to channel partners uh, business buyers retailers and consumers and you know all of that right there so um the main thing to remember when when doing any of this type of marketing, when you're dealing, you know, you're you're strategizing your placement. Any one of these mar these channels, did, it doesn't matter whether it's the conventional fulfillment, electronic, e I mean, uh, excuse me, electronic procurement, which is e procurement, uh, internet based, or brick and mortar. To protect your brand, you need rigid inventory management. Okay to ensure stock availability, uh, stock availability. Okay. And I'm going to tell the story of the sister and, uh, two things that she always, it was, it was, I was trying to tell her, man, it, this would make her business grow so much quicker and faster, especially with the following she had inventory and pricing. Okay. So yes, inventory management guys, it's not, it's not a good thing to sell out. And that was one thing, man, that she used to always be happy, so happy that she would sell out on her shirts. And I'd be like, fam, do you realize, like, it's not a good thing? I mean, it looks good on the Internet, but as a business owner, it's not good because that revenue stream is not coming in no more until you re-up on this product. So however long it's going to take, you're going to be sitting there waiting on money to come. But if you were managing your inventory properly, you will know, OK, when I get to this part right here, I need to go ahead and begin some, you know, product now and keep that revenue stream. And also this protects your brand because, you know, you might have missed out on a couple customers that were late that you done sold out. And, and the first day of you getting these shirts and now they got to wait. And it's like, you know, it's so you want to make sure that you're stocked up with your product, man. You don't want to sell out on your product. Yeah, it looks good, but it's not good because, like I said, it's, it's you got to wait on your uh, money or whatever. Like I said, it cuts off that, that that revenue stream, that cash flow. So that was one of the things. Like I say, pricing was another thing that uh, the sister was having problem with. She was really... Uh, selling her products for a cheap cheap price and i'm like okay you have a high demand you have a big fan base 
you need to go up, you know, on your prices. This will balance it out, especially if you're, if you're not going to have a big inventory and you keep selling out. You need to go up on the prices because you're selling a lot of these and you're really not making no money. And you the money that you're you, you have to keep putting money into it. If you would price it at a certain price. The business will pretty much pay for itself. And that's what I was trying to get through to the system, man. Get your business to pay for itself. You're still putting money in this product that clearly people want. It's a high demand. If you just adjust your prices a little bit, it'll start paying for itself and you won't have to put no money in it and you'll start seeing profit, you know. So um, I just wanted to, like I say, tell that story or whatnot because it's key, man. Track your inventory, man. Make sure your inventory is A1 and you keep everything fully stocked. Um, I'm, I'm going through it myself right now. Like I said, when I'm, I'm going through this transition and if I just stay with Divine S's or, you know, if even if I knew I was going to transition and change the brand a little bit, I should have stepped, I mean, kept my inventory stocked up. Now I'm restocking everything. Now, you know, I just got my incense. I'm going to have to go ahead and get my shea butters candles all of that type of stuff so keep your inventory stocked up um this is going to be pretty much like a little short vlog today i just wanted to give those marketing channels out as far as like placement uh because right now i'm really really focused in on the placement like i said as far as these gas stations um the weather's been crazy. I need to be making instant right now, but the weather is really, really crazy right now. It's just this this rain and stuff, man. But um, I got I got uh, I got a lot going on this week or whatnot as far as getting my distributors uh, together or whatnot. So, but I wanted to make sure I do this vlog or whatnot and drop this one for you guys. Just talking about like I said, just different channels to help placement and uh, just also. Have you thinking outside of the box? A lot of people don't know these different type of marketing avenues and, you know, just uh, different lanes, man, that you can take to get the the brand awareness out, the brand recognition out, the brand identity out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here stationary in Huntsville, Alabama, but I'm thinking globally as far as like certain products that I, I you know, I make or whatnot. So it's all about just knowing the knowledge, man, and just applying the knowledge, actually, you know, willing yourself into the position and just doing it. You know? So, yeah, I just like I said, I just want to give that game out today. Um, any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, uh, you know, feel free to comment on the on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can also email me at sardavid83 at gmail dot com. Um, but yeah, other than that, I just wanted to drop those little tidbits of information as far as helping with the brand. Uh, since it was Thursday, Brand of Land Thursday or whatnot. Um, other than that, I really don't have too much. I'm not going to take too much of your time or whatnot today. Peace and prosperity to the family. I hope um, you know all of this content that I've been producing, I hope it's helping. Like I say, if not, feel, please feel free to give me any type of critique. And I swear, man, I will... You know, fix the problem or whatever, if it is a problem. So, but peace to the family. I hope everybody is um, having a, a good good day as far as business. I hope, you know, everything that you're trying to manifest with, with your brand or whatnot, man, it comes into fruition uh, for you guys or whatnot. So, like I say, just to be able to be of service to you guys with this content that I've been producing as far as like um, branding tips or just business tips in general or just being a, a motivational beacon light, whatever it is, man, that's, that's keeping you going in business, man. If I'm being, if I'm able to be of service, man, I, I, I would love that. So, uh, like I say, peace to the family from Brother Divine of a Culture Shock, LLC. And uh, let's get back to business, man. Let's get back to the, the do right me, the money. Peace to the family. <laughs>